Hello, welcome to the third session of this line of printing course. Today we're going to be looking at the reduction technique. If you search the internet, you'll see lots of examples of coloured line of prints where you've got colours layered one on top of the other. Um, this is using the reduction technique usually, um, and that's what I'm going to illustrate for you today. With the reduction technique, we cut a small amount away initially from the lino and print one colour, then cut more, print again over the top, and then cut more as many times as you'd like. Um, it's a technique which takes a little bit of getting your head around, so we're going to do an exercise which will ho hopefully be fun, but will get you to understand the technique. But the first thing we need to do is make something called a registration plate, which will help us make sure that when we print the second time or the third time over our original print, we get it in exactly the right place. To make a registration plate, we need um, a piece of card for the background. We need four carefully cut strips of card, cut very straight. Uh, we need the liner we're going to use and the paper we're going to print on, which should be bigger than the piece of liner. I prefer about twice as big. We need masking tape and some scissors. So what I'm going to do is take my lino and tape down carefully some card at both sides, two, on two sides, I should say. Down nice and firmly. As close to the edge of the card as I possibly can, keeping that nicely buttered up. This creates a spacer for where I will put my liner every single time. So carefully taping that over, make sure that's nice and square. And then I do exactly the same for my paper. Because I'm using quite a, a bit bigger paper than the actual lino, I don't have to worry about it being exactly square, but you could measure it carefully if you preferred. Keeping that buttered up nice and tight. And the second one. A bit more tape. make sure that really is nicely and tight against the paper. What that means is when I come to print, I can put my lino in there and put my paper carefully in there. And they will line up in the same place each time. Right, now on to our exercise. This exercise draws inspiration from this wonderful, uh, deceptively simple lino print that I found on the internet. So, first things first, I'm going to mark out some general areas on here. The sun, moon, sorry, the, some waves. I'm not trying to copy this, I'm just using that as inspiration. And that is it. That is all my planning, keeping it very, very simple. And now I'm going to begin cutting. So using my cutting board. And just like on the image, which I'll put there, I'm going to take out a little bit of spray on the top of the waves, which is going to be white. I'm going to wiggle, so I've got a little bit of texture there. A little bit of texture. Maybe another strip of it.
there. See how little I've cut? Not very much at all. The first layer of reduction often involves taking away less than a third of the actual um, lino. So now I'm going to print that. I've inked my lino with a pale blue, mixing white and blue. And to print it, I first of all push my lino carefully into the registration plate. Quick tip, don't ink your lino on top of your registration plate, otherwise it will just get very, very messy. Now I take my piece of paper, I carefully put it into the corner. You'll get a technique for this. Do you line up with the top edge first and then the side or vice versa? But notice it's not touching the line at the moment. And I drop it down, hold it with my hand and burnish, either with a roller or a spoon. So, let's have a look. There is my first layer, and look at how little has actually been took away. I'm just getting the white established. I recommend, because once you've cut, uh, you won't be able to put any of the lino back, I recommend printing quite a few off of this first cut before you uh, move on to cutting a second time. Just a reminder that when you're inking, you can ink in different sorts of ways. So uh, this one, I just inked to one block of colour. This one, I've gone from darker to lighter using a, a grade on a big roller. And this one, using a sm two small rollers, I put light blue there and light yellow there. Um, you want to think about doing quite a few uh, initial background um, prints because if something goes wrong and you've only done one, you can't go back in this process. The next stage is to cut more out of the lino. So I'm ready for my second cut now. And what I'm going to cut away is everything I want to stay that first colour I printed. In other words, on this picture, the light blue. Another way of looking at it is that I'm going to cut everything away apart from the dark areas. It takes a little bit of getting your head around, um, but you'll get there. I promise. So I'm going to cut away most of the sky and quite a large amount of the waves. So, for my second cut, I've cut away a lot of the sky. I've cut right across where the moon was, even the odd sort of mark. I've cut a little bit from this wave, um, a lot from that one, and just a bit from this one. Now, when it comes to printing with this one, I need to remember that I line up exactly again in there and I paper in here in order to make sure that uh, everything is lined up properly. Although use a little bit of leeway in this particular exercise, if it's just a little bit out, it might even produce quite an interesting result. So here is my first layer. And for illustration purposes, I've taken a straight print off of the second cut so you can see um, what I would get if I just printed it onto white paper. Effectively, what I'm now doing is combining those two images together. So here goes. I take my layer one, pop it into the registration plate carefully, 
and then burnish. And there we have the two-stage line of print. Remember that you can play around with how you ink the plate. And that's what I'm going to do now with my other two. So with this print, I've got a more subtle range of colours because on both the background colour and the second layer of colour, I've graded the colour from dark to light, moving upwards. On my final um, print, what I want to do is to print a completely different colour uh, in the sky as to the sea. So in order to do that, I've taken the scalpel and cut this into two halves, and I'm going to ink both halves, and I'll show you putting it into the registration plate. So on this final print, I inked the bottom with a dark blue and some reds and yellows in the top. I've put that carefully in place and I'm sliding that in and making sure it puts up nice and tightly. And now I shall place my print first layer of colour over the top and burnish. Notice the dirty marks on the back of this because it obviously didn't clean the roller properly last time I used it. Let's see how that's coming out. That's quite dramatic. I could cut again and then say print black or something like that. But I hope you get the idea of, uh, of the process. And I think by playing around with this, it helps you understand uh, what you're taking away at each stage. I'm going to show you uh, all three of them together and then a more complicated example on how to tackle it. So there are my three prints to illustrate how different uh, each one uh, can look by applying different techniques. Um, this is a nice way of working where it's a little bit more improvised um, and inspirational rather than overly planned. Here's another example of that. So here is Lino, you can see virtually everything's been cut away, and here is the print. Now, apart from the initial planning with the white and leaving that centerpiece to print the black, pretty much it's been cut um, in a more instinctual way, just trying each time to create more and more featheriness within this flower. What we are going to look at now, though, is uh, a more careful planning for something which has got uh, you know, much more definition. So here we see the three steps in producing something which is a little bit more uh, difficult because you've got to be quite precise with uh, where each cut is placed. So in the first one, only a very small amount cut away, just the white. In the second one, uh, the area that you wanted to say the lightest blue has been cut away. And then the third one, colour you wanted to stay the mid blue. So you've got that progression. That's not always that easy to see. So let me just illustrate in a slightly different way. What I have here is the tracings for doing this. So there's tracing one.
and this leads to that print. So that is the area that is being printed. Tracing two, let's move that down slightly. And again, what I printed is just the plate at that stage. So you can see everything that has been cut away, all the white areas. I'm tracing three for the final step, and you can see that final layer printed. All that comes together to produce that. With this technique, it can help if you have a computer program which will break uh, the picture down into um, just three blocks of colours or four blocks of colours. Or you just have to be very painstakingly decide through tracing what your white is going to be, what your first and what your second colour is going to be. I'm now going to show you a slideshow of work by, uh, by students. Uh, and then have a little chat with you about the next session. I hope you enjoy this session and if you do Facebook, please do post images of what you achieve uh, on the Artful Facebook page. Details coming up in a minute. The final session of this course will be looking at multiple block printing and we're going to look at using two blocks, one to create uh, a background layer and the other to create a top layer. So you can see this happening in various different ways uh, in these examples. Bye-bye for now.